Don't eat yourself in the morning. Sleep in until noon. Today's lesson is going to be about the SQL case query. The SQL case query is a case statement that returns value based on that evaluation of a statement. So why is this so awesome? Well, booyah, it's cool because a case query can handle situations in which you may want to perform more than two tasks based on more than two possible values of a condition. So up until now, you've done basic where queries where you can only filter out one condition um, for the return. But now that you are in advanced analytics, you are now the advanced data scientist, you can now add the case query statement to your um, repertoire and show that you can do queries that count multiple conditions in one query. So some things to know about case. The SQL Server provides a mechanism for returning different values in the select clause based on different Boolean conditions. This is the case statement. So some cool things are that case expressions can go anywhere in the SQL query. I like to tease and say case is like the world wide traveler. It can go anywhere folks and put on the miles. I've been everywhere. is a SQL case statement, it must include the when, the then, and the end terminator. And uh, when you're providing a conditional construct, the SQL case is like a if-then-else statement used in many other programming languages. So it's used to select the data and provide output based on the conditions inside the case statement. So essentially, it's as if we're asking the computer when, when this condition is met, then, do this. So this functionality provides the developer the ability to manipulate the presentation of the data without actually updating or changing the data inside the SQL table. Pretty cool. Also, else is optional. You don't actually need to write this in the query to make it work. It's just an optional statement. Another benefit is that case is capable of these logical comparisons, these Boolean um, uh, queries, the equal, the less than sign, the greater than sign, etc. So that's another cool thing that case can do that other um, statements can't, such as decode, which it can only work as an equality check. But case is capable of many logical comparisons. Case can also work with predicates and searchable subqueries. That's another thing that decode cannot do, um, that it only works with the expressions that are scalar values. Uh, whereas case can work with predicates and subqueries in the searchable form. So you can do a subquery with case. And last of all, but not least, case is ANSI SQL compliant. All right, let's talk about the actual case expression statement. So the case expression has two formats. The first one is the simple case expression compares an expression to a set of simple expressions to determine the results. So a case expression in itself is only part of a statement. It is not the statement in its own right, so just remember that. So what does an expression do? Essentially, a case expression evaluates to a value. So in layman's terms, it just means the case expression, it searches the table one row at a time, and it will take on the value of that specified result whenever one of those conditions is true. So for instance, here's our SQL um, case syntax for the expression. So when and then then it will result. So here we're going to use um, the Microsoft um, Adventure Works table to run a query. And so we're asking to do a case when R, then if that is true, then it will result in the condition road. Basically, it's comparing the value to the expression. And when the values match, it returns that then clause. Our then clause here is, is road. It, that's our return value. 
if the first condition is not satisfied for a row, the second condition is tested. So if this wasn't met, then the query will keep running down till the next clause, till the next clause, till the next clause, until the conditions are met. And um, if none of those one clauses equate to true, then the SQL Server returns um, the optional else clause. So here's our else clause. If none of these are true, for instance, these are all um, bike items, road bike, mountain bike, touring bike. If none of these meet this condition, then else it is not for sale. That is our else clause. And then if no match is found at all, then the expression returns a null value and processing will move on to the next row. So the second format for case expression is the search case expression evaluates a set of Boolean expressions to determine the result. So again, it can use Boolean operators to determine um, these conditions. So let's move into specifically talking about case syntax. We delved into it a little bit. Let's go in a little bit more. So here's our syntax, right? Your case, you're gonna bring up your column name. When your condition is then, it will result, and when this condition is met, it will result. And then you can keep on going as many rows as you want. And then here's your optional else clause, and then your in terminator. So in this example, here's our syntax. So in this example, we've got a table containing the names and ranks of various military officers. So what we want to do is list the names preceded by the correct abbreviation for each rank. So I wrote this case statement below because it does the job of what we want to do. So the resulting case syntax language reads, if the rank is when general, then it will result in GEN, an abbreviated version. And remember, when you're writing your query, anytime you have a character string, you always need to put it inside the single quotation um, marks here because um, if it's an integer, you don't need that, but because it is characters, you will need that. So just remember that when you're writing your query. So again, we have several when statements. The query expression will continue to go all the way down the table until it achieves a match. And then when we run this query, the resulting query will give you the names of all the officers with their corresponding rank. So for instance, after the query was run and we executed this query, it resulted in the table returning General Nimitz. So Nimitz was in the last name and it matched that he was a general. And so when general, then gen, so it abbreviated our result to gen, G-E-N, short for general. And if the rank wasn't listed in the case expression, then the else clause doesn't give him a title. So for instance, if rank wasn't here, it would have just been Nimitz. That's how that table would have read. So let's go into some real world examples here. All right, so one of the case query benefits is that it allows the developer the ability to manipulate the presentation of the data without actually updating or changing the data as it exists in the SQL table. So this is a really great feature. Let's say you are a store owner and you want to run a query to show all the items that you have that are in stock. So the above query that we wrote here, you can see we want when quantity is greater than zero, then all those items are in stock. When it is less than zero, that's our else optional clause, it is now out of stock and then we'll run, and, um, run it against the inventory table here. So our results are, after the query was run, it showed a return table with the items that were in stock. So here's our product. We're selecting from the column product. So 19 inch LCD screen TV. And because we had more than zero items, it therefore was in stock. But if it was less than zero, it would have not shown here in this resulting table because it would have been out of stock. So again, it's a great command to successfully mask the actual value of the product inventory without actually altering any data to see what you have in that um, inventory. All right, let's do another real world example. So again, let's say you're another, um, you're also a business owner and there's a time when you would like to offer a sale as an incentive for people to shop at your store. 
So this is a perfect opportunity to write a case query and alter your inventory sale prices at that presentation level rather than actually changing it in that entire um, database. We just want to modify the data without actually altering it. So let's write a case query where we can do that. So first, we're going to pull a list of recent orders and we're going to we're going to pull or select it from the column orders. Then we want to match it with the inventory table, right? So we're going to do this join inventory clause because we got to join the inventory table to, to this um, query in order to um, show the quantity of items pur purchased and the price from the inventory table. So again, we also wanted to offer a 25% off sale for these items. It's Christmas time and you want 25% off your items, for instance. Let's just say that as an example. So in order to do a percentage sale, you have to multiply the current price by 0.75. So here's our query. When the price is greater than zero, then multiply the price times 0.75. This in turn will reduce the price by approximately 25%. So after executing the query, the results return. So here we have our customer with the product that they want to buy. Here's your original inventory price. After executing our query, we get our 25% off sale price. And that will, um, the result will return a new table column with the calculated sales price at the end of the row. So now that we've delved into the actual case syntax and we've given you real world examples Next, I'm going to do an intermission and then we'll break. And when we come back, I'll show it to you how you can do it actually in the uh, MySQL um, database itself. What is a case statement? A case statement evaluates a list of conditions and returns one result. It is actually more like an if statement in Excel where we're saying, for example, my, my syntax below, that case, when revenue is greater than average revenue, then do this, else do that, and end. There are two different ways that you can format a case statement. One of the ways is with a syntax of characters with just the when, and then, and else. The second way you can do it is with formatting it with integers, when one value, then a character. And just something to remember, the else clause is always optional, just as it is in the Excel if function. Processing will stop as soon as the condition is true. I created a select table to see which departments are above the average revenue. So I selected the statement, then I'm going to be doing the windowing function by average revenue and partitioning by department ID per the department. So I selected the statement and here's the executed results. For department one, it shows the average revenue of $35,355. Department two, it shows revenue of $41,400. Department three, $56,000 and that shows your department one, department two, and department three. But how would you go about saying, is revenue column here greater than or less than the average revenue that is calculated out in this other column? Well, a way we can do that is to make a case statement, but I do not want to put the aggregate function with the windowing inside of our case statement. So I initially wrap the query inside of a table to do a subquery, like just shown above in the blue. So if we execute again, we will get the very same results back. That windowing function is being put inside of a column called average revenue for the alias. We want to say when the revenue case is greater than the average revenue, then our result will be a string called better than average. Else, it will be a string called not better, and that will go into a column called ranking. When we run the results there, we will now get here on the other side a not better, or are better than average. To hear is human, but to blame it on a computer is even more error. But if at first you don't succeed, call it version 1.0.